This is going to be an overview screencast for the Moodle LTI uh, activity. And the because this is an overview activity, I'm going to gloss over a lot of the setup details for this. Rather, I would just like to show you uh, what this looks like generally from a user's perspective and uh, also what some of the potential um, uh, uses of this are. So what you're going to see today is three learning management sites, staging three, staging five, and this one which is going to be demo.flagshiplms.com. Now staging three and staging five are both going to be LTI providers. In other words, they have the course that is going to be taken by the consumer. And uh, this consumer is going to have uh, a student who will uh, click on the link and then will or will not, depending on the settings, be added to the course, but will be able to view the course content for each of these. Now, this particular course is set up so that although there are multiple activities within the course, only one of them is LTI enabled. So a user from the consumer clicking on the link will only get to see the one activity from this course and nothing else. This course, on the other hand, is set up so that the entire course can be consumed by the uh, user in this particular course. And Foghorn Leghorn is going to be our consumer, just so you can look for his name in the participants list. So we've got uh, course one and course two. And so let me show you just quickly what these look like here. I'm going to drag these over. This is what course one looks like in staging three. And it's just got some things in it, SCORM packages and you know various other types of things like that. Um, that's all that's in there. The, uh, the only thing in staging three, however, that's been LTI enabled is the course design primer for the LMS administrators. So when the user from the demo site clicks on the link, they should not see announcements or cloud cost optimization or course forum or a sample SCORM package. They should only be able to see the course design primer. Okay, so that's the first thing that we want to note. Then we have um, uh, site five, test course two, and that looks like this. So in this particular site, let's get back to the course. This is test course two in staging five. Test course two has um, a lot of some, no, not a lot of different activities. Um, they've got, okay, virtually no activities. Essentially what they're gonna see is the announcements, but you're gonna see all of these topics. All of the topics, even though they're empty, are going to be available for the user to be able to see, okay? Uh, so that's what you're gonna see from staging five. All right. Now, let's take, oops, let's go now from here, since we don't need this anymore, we're going to go into our test course. This is demo.flagshiplms.com. And if you see up here, I'm logged in as Foghorn Leghorn. So when I go to Foghorn Leghorn uh, and I scroll through my activities, I can see that I have a link to staging three test course one and a link to staging five, test course two. Now I have set these differently such that staging three, test course one is going to appear embedded in this particular course when I click on the link. You'll see the actual Moodle course minus the blocks. You're only gonna see the content part and you'll see that displayed right here. Staging five, on the other hand, is going to open in a new window. So you will see the entire course will appear as a new tab over here, okay? So clicking on staging three, you can see that I've got the staging three test course and notice that I only get to see the course design primer. I don't get to see anything else from that particular course because I only have that single activity enabled for LTI sharing. And all this on the left is not from the LTI course. This is from the course that I'm currently in in my demo site. So you can see that that is working exactly as we had anticipated it. So I'm gonna go back now to the course and we're gonna click on number five right here. 
You can see that number five opens in a brand new tab and notice that it is the entire staging test course two here. And I can go down and I can look at all those other things uh, that, I, that I saw previously when I looked at five, I've got access to everything. But notice that up here, I, am, I have um, an enrolled LTI uh, username here and then my Foghorn Leghorn name associated with that. Okay. And so now when I finish with this, I can just close it. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is pause you for a moment. We're going to pull up the participants list. Now, I think this is a pretty cool feature of the um, of the LMS, of the LTI functionality of the LMS. And that is, notice that I'm in staging five, which is one of our providers. And in this course, when I click on the link from the consumer course, the demo course, it will automatically create an account for me based on my credentials in the demo course. And so you can see that Foghorn Leghorn and the email address were brought over. He was automatically added as a student, um, albeit to no groups. So this, uh, this account, you don't, the nice part about LTI is that the consumer right here does not have to create an account here beforehand. The act of connecting these two sites via the LTI secret key and URL means that the accounts will be created automatically in the provider's courses. Now, the cool thing about this is you can enable one of two types of functionality. Either by connecting these two courses, they will automatically enroll 100% of the consumer users from that course into the provider courses. Or the other functionality is you can make the connection and the accounts will be created only when a consumer clicks on the link. So the difference is if I have 100 users here and I use the first method, 100 users will automatically be created in these two courses whether or not they click on the link. However, the second method means that if I have 100 users down here and only 50 users click on the provider course links, then only 50 accounts will be created over here. So those are two options that you can use uh, when you're um, setting up your uh, initial LTI. Now, the other cool thing is that if you decide that you do not want your user data in another site, what you can do is you can set up your LTI so that when the user clicks on the link, it anonymizes the data. So you can see here user 3607 is Foghorn Leghorn. And this is the email address rather than Foghorn Leghorn at, or F Leghorn at, at fakemail.com. They've got just a random hashed uh, and salted email address right here. It's not even hashed and salted, it's just a random email address. So if you do, if your users are consuming your content but they wish to remain anonymous, maybe for you know, it's a school district, for example, and they don't want user accounts being created here, then although a user account is created, um, that data is, is um, d will not allow anybody in this site to be able to actually see who it was that was accessing the site. So, um, although the uh, you can have grades, transmitted back to the consumer site. So that's a, a pretty useful uh, technique. Anyway, I wanted, I hope that was useful overview for you. Uh, there are some great things that you can do with this. Most learning management systems are LTI enabled. And the only thing that's necessary in order to um, have a, a tool available is that you need to provide the consumer with um, a, some, some basic details. And so you would provide the consumer with what's called a cartridge URL right here. 
you would provide them with a secret. And when you give them that information, uh, it will make a link between those two learning management systems and um, then those consumers can make use of all of the content in your site. Okay? So I hope that was a useful overview for you. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact one of the members of our team.